most of the time you'll have a, a different thought about what ringing is until you go there and see it firsthand. I really like music and it's just like a nice uh, sound to listen to. Really beautiful to hear and on Sunday and the bells ring. I like listening to it. It's really quite inclusive. Anyone can do it. It doesn't really need kind of physical strength at all. It did surprise me. It's not really the physical element, but the sort of mental side of actually remembering all the steps. It's good exercise. It's good physical exercise. It's good mental exercise. Um, it's good social exercise. Lots of my friends are bell ringers. Um, I'm married to a bell ringer. That's how we met. Um, you know, it's a good way of getting to getting to know other people. So I came along. Uh, as a family, looked at the bell tower and it actually looked really easy. And they wanted volunteers, so me and my son, um, Will, he came, we came along the week after. And I tell you what, it isn't as easy as it looks. <laughs> well, luckily enough, Nigel is a really good teacher and there's an awful lot of patience. And there's a lot more to it than you think. But yeah, just give it a go. It's good fun. As a ringer, your family, uh, you know, it, it's all about the, the, the group. And you're doing something together that you can't do on your own. It's one of these wonderful things where, where the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. So the learning process varies a little bit, I would say, depending on the teacher and depending on the learner and the situation. But typically, if I were going to teach someone I would break it down into smaller steps because you can't just grab a rope and get going, it's a bit more complicated than that. So I teach them different aspects of learning to what we call handle the bell, so pull the rope and make the bell ring at the time you want it to ring. Um, and we gradually build it up from kind of simpler building blocks into being able to ring the bell entirely independently by yourself. But really that is just the first stage because once you can ring the bell by yourself, then you can join in with other people, which is where the fun starts. So then you can ring with the rest of the band, and then you can start doing sort of more interesting things. They're unaffected, so yeah. three, four, five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You hear the bells ringing in just something that I've always been drawn to, and I just decided one day, I'm, I'm not getting any younger, I want to give it a try. Um, they always say to learn something new, in the handstroke gap. One to two, uh, two lead. One to two. You don't even need to say two. Okay. I've done it wrong. I'm sorry. One to two, two, two lead. You shout at these people. <laughs> I discovered whilst I was up in Norwich the sort of friendliness of the ringers there and the encouragement they were giving me and I've always found that wherever I've been ringing a lot of support from fellow ringers. So plain hunt, if you started on the two, you'd come down and lead and then you'd go out to eighth place. Feeling when you finally learned a really hard method, which is a really nice satisfactory feeling. I enjoy competing in competitions and travelling for the competitions. In a few months we're going to York to compete, which is pretty big. These are the important years, you can ignore all of these ones. <laughs> so it's where all the districts in Kent compete. I really want to win this trophy, but unfortunately <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. But perhaps you don't want perhaps it. one day Canterbury <laughs> will be on that trophy. You can go and also meet a lot of people your own age and you get to take part in lots of competitions and go to lots of different places as well to ring, which is really good. And beat them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another good thing about ringing, there is no age division. You, you are working together as a team, whether or not you've got somebody in their teens or in their 90s. Uh, we all need to work together in order to produce a decent piece of ringing and that's, that is fantastic. I prefer the handbells to the tower bells because uh, it's slightly more hard work on the brain and I enjoy that challenge. It's, it's good mentally as well as physically.
I have found that ringing is a really good family activity. When my daughter was born, we were bringing her up into the tower from a very early age. So it's a way of bringing us together, really. We can go off to ring at towers, and I found that really quite, quite good in building that bond with, with my oldest daughter. Accompanying my dad to the tower, it's quite nice to do stuff with my father. <laughs> but that said, I'm a teenager, so... It's good to keep that connection strong, I guess. Yeah, yeah something I've, yeah. I've always liked, that it's an activity all the family can do. There's something emotional about the bells and living in a town with bells. It would be awful if they weren't here. I think it goes well with the town. You know, we're next to the castle, next to the church. You're never unsure of what time it is. So, yeah, it, it is nice. And then the special events as well, where they have the quarter peels, that's quite nice as well. I'm about 400 yards from here and on a summer's afternoon in the garden with a glass of Sauvignon Blanc it's lovely to hear the bells in the background because that's when they practice. Travel's going, she's good. Is it music? Is it sport? It's like a lifelong learning opportunity. It's something that isn't overtly religious, although it happens in a church mostly. Bells are a call away from just our individual private lives. If we're having a celebration, it's allowing people to join in with that celebration. I enjoy that you can play a lot of tunes and make a lot of noise. Two, three, miss, catch and hold. Usually the first thing they say when they see how small I am is, oh, do you go up in the air on the rope? My answer is, no, 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 you should never go up in the air on the rope. This doesn't happen.